remind you what Pythagorean theorem is. If you have a right triangle, then the square of the hypotenuse, which the hypotenuse is C, is equal to the sum, right, the addition, of the squares of the legs. Um, a is a leg and B is a leg and C is the hypotenuse. The, the hypotenuse is the longest side. It is directly across from the right angle. It's the largest side, the longest side, because it's across from the largest angle. Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. The sum of the squares of the leg is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. That's what Pythagorean theorem says. <clears throat> so, some examples with Pythagorean theorem. Okay, solve for x. So you have to decide, every time you have to decide which is the, the hypotenuse. Always look for it. It's not always going to be on the same side. You can see all three of these triangles are rotated around where the right angle is in a different place. So in this case, here's my right angle, and here's my hypotenuse. Here's my right angle, here's my hypotenuse. Right angle, hypotenuse. Be careful, especially when they're looking like this. We always want to put them on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Okay, so the two legs, a squared plus b squared. It doesn't matter which one is a and which one is b. I like my variable to be first if possible, so that's the way, reason I wrote it that way. Okay, so I would subtract 5 squared from both sides. We can simplify, but we can also handle this all at one time. Type it in your calculator. 13 squared minus 5 squared is 144. So x squared is 144. Okay, to fix that or to finish it out, we take the square root. So the square root of 144 is plus 12 or minus 12. We don't care about the minus 12 because I can't have a minus 12 or negative 12 as a side length. And so my side length then of the triangle would be 12. Um, if this one, see we had a nice whole number, that was a perfect square, so it came out nice and easy. Um, on this one, again, 10 is your hypotenuse, right? That's my C. It will be x squared plus a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Again, it doesn't matter which one's which. Now, if you do 10 squared minus 5 squared, you get that x squared is 75. Now, I need to point this out. It's not 10 minus 5 and then square it. Okay? It's not 10 minus 5 and then square it. It's 10 squared minus 5 squared. If you're going to do it all at once, you have to square it as you go. You can't do subtraction and then square. Order of operations says that you have to do those exponents first. Now the square root of 75, say you don't recognize it, the square root of 75 is a decimal. I asked you to leave your answer exact. That means you need to reduce your answer. Sorry, can't keep it in focus. That doesn't like the calculator. So we're going to go back to what we just did. The biggest perfect square that goes into, right, I need to take the square root, the biggest perfect square that goes into 75 is 25. It would be the square root of 25 and times 3. So 25 times 3 is 75. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 3 is a decimal. So the final answer is 5 times the square root of 3. That's the exact, because I didn't have to round. I didn't have to do anything with the decimals at all. This last one, be careful, right? X is now your hypotenuse. So we're going to square these two sides. It doesn't matter which one's which. Be careful here. It's 2 square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared is equal to x squared. What I'm afraid that some of you will do is this, 2 root 3 squared. And you'll type that in on your calculator that way. Well, what happens is only the square root of 3 is getting squared, not the 2. So, right, you can pick up your calculator and let the calculator handle that math for you. 2 square root of 3 and then square it, and it gives you 6, okay? Well, that's not right. <laughs> so I know that's not right, so let me, let me go back to square root of 3, and the arrow out of this, right, squared. That's, that's, that's exactly what would happen if you just squared the square root of 3. You should get 12. Here's the reason I knew that was wrong, because 2 squared is 4, the square root of 3 squared is 3, so I knew that had to be 12. 12 plus 4 is equal to x squared. x squared is 16, or if you take the square root of both sides, you get plus 16 or negative 16, positive 16, negative 16. We don't need, the, excuse me, 4 plus 
positive 4, negative 4. We don't need the negative because we can't have a negative side length, so the only one we keep is 4. Now, 